Hmm. All right. It says I'm live. I don't see the microphone moving much. Hello? <laughs> yeah, well, it's moving. Just not. Let's see if you can change the settings. Eh. All right. <clears throat> so we'll call this a live video for the hell of it. Don't know how long it'll work. Keep working. Maybe I should say. Uh, yeah, it's not very good quality. <laughs> yeah, it's backwards. I need to reverse it. Uh, I can't do that, so I'm stuck. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, my screen's over there, so I have to look over there. It's nothing over there, but me. Uh, guard your privacy. I don't know what that means. Live chat. Let's see what that crap is. We got options. Participants. Pop out. Yeah, the pop out thing might be to my advantage. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. All for one, one for all. Hey, yeah. retards are everywhere. They're just creeping. The retards are just creeping closer and closer. It really is like you know some sort of zombie holocaust, and instead it's just retards. Retards are as bad as zombies, frankly. All right, so I figure I'll talk about photons a little bit uh, because that's what I've been doing. I'm just pointing out some things. So I was thinking about the uh, the fact that I've sort of pointed out that antenna polarization, you know, the radio wave and uh, photons, are basically being polarized by the fact that it takes a certain amount of time, okay, to move at the speed of light up an antenna and when you're putting your frequency in to the wire uh what's basically going to dictate you know is at the speed of light how fast can how much antenna can the frequency pass through um you know to get to a certain uh before the the next thing so if you think of this frequency more realistically <clears throat> as uh you know an on and off so you have bits of energy quanta little clumps and then no clumps and then clumps and then no clumps um how long does it take for the clumps at the speed of light to get up the antenna and that's essentially your wavelength and that's essentially your antenna polarization so the relationship between polarization and wavelength is dictated by how far the stuff can travel at almost the speed of light through an antenna. So if you have microwaves, the three centimeter um, wavelength, then it's three centimeters of antenna before the next pulse can get to that location. So what you're really only using three centimeters of the antenna. So if you put microwaves into a a 40 foot antenna it's really only going to be able to use the first three centimeters because the first three centimeters dictate how far it can travel and still be the same pulse so how so the pulse could come out here it could come out here it could come out here it could come out here but the point is is that the the bit okay has to um takes time to get to the, the furthest point, and that's really what's dictating the polarization. So the polarization is a consequence of the time it takes to get up the antenna uh, to, you know, launch the, the bit of energy. And that, you know, off, will offset the, the um, uh, offsets, wrong word to use, um yeah so it just pr provides all the ones that come out the top of the antenna all the pulses that get to the top get to the, the get to the three centimeter mark all those pulses will be back on this frequency because that's they all had the same delay and all the ones that came out of here are going to be at the same frequency but they're obviously going to have a little bit different phase 
right? but they'll be the right frequency. So all the ones coming out of here are going to be at the same frequency as these, except their phase is going to be shifted because of the distance it took to travel up the antenna. And so the longer the wavelength, the more phase different between the different signals, but they're all going to be the same signal. They're just going to have a different alignment. All right, so uh, I was thinking about the creation of the photon itself. Why is it, what's, what's the, you know, what's coming out of the antenna, you know, if anything is. And um, that's sort of the part where it gets a little bit interesting. Just seeing if anything's going on over there. It doesn't look like it. Where does it say how many people are in the room? Ah, oh, four. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Woo. Okay. So this lighting's a little shitty, so I have to bend this a little bit more, I guess. All right. So uh, the creation of a photon. Better rack than that. Something here. Okay. So, um, so the idea would be photons of light. We don't get to pump them in at a frequency. So somehow the matter has to create the uh, frequency. And so by the same principle, you could sort of understand, though, that electron in atoms. So, you know, the standard model is just too stupid. So I'm going to try to help you understand that atoms are... Um, electric things, you know, uh, I mean magnetic things. So the protons and the electrons are magnetically held in positions and the electrons not spinning around. I mean, you can't make any sense of any of this uh, electrodynamics, whatever you want to call it, that creates photons. If you're thinking this electron is spinning around here at 400,000 miles an hour and doing all that kind of stuff, then how can it create a coherent signal you know, through the material, through the atoms. It just doesn't make any sense how voltage, yes, okay, would move. Um, you know, it doesn't give you a diagram. So electrons are in pretty standard positions. And the ones that are key are these ones <coughs> that aren't, don't have a proton in the way because they basically have energy between them. So they're like little ping pong paddles. And if you hit this one, the stuff bouncing back and forth between them will kind of guarantee that this one feels this one's movement so if this one moves this one's going to move out okay and that's sort of the key thing so i'm thinking through this understanding that it may be possible to discern the um, gravity weight of the universal force, that is the force that's always <clears throat> pushing on everything, um, based on the idea that what's really happening is you can almost think of matter as uh, little pieces of stuff that are movable, you know, that they're stacked on top of each other, and that you could push one of these things and it would push out this way a little bit. And that would be the electron. So you're hitting an electron on one side, pushing it into the surface. And by pushing that electron in, the forces between the electrons ends up pushing this electron out. And so if you thought about that, oh, there's a comment. Let's see what it is. Hey, Gary, thanks for your service. I really like the way you roll. I don't like rolling. Uh, reality is too whatever radical for most people no I, I you know i just don't think so i just i think most people are um they're just so caught up in their their you know it's the whole idea that they they, they make celebrities out of idiots i mean you know basketball players and baseball players and bullshit they they're <laughs> their their taste in human is so pitifully bad in terms of what they admire and what they respect and what they're interested in. And again, they want to be interested. They only want to play games they can be good at. And they're only good at like hopscotch and dodgeball or, you know, they can't do anything a little bit complicated or sophisticated. And that's the dismal truth. People are just dumb and they want to stay that way because it's easy. Uh, I'll listen to you later well whatever that is go to work oh yeah that's a horrible thought 
Ugh. <laughs> I had to do that in the morning. I'd really, I'd have to kill myself. There's just no other way I could get around. I just couldn't get around it. I mean, so bad. Worshipping the sport ball. Well, yeah, however you want to put it, but uh, it's, you know, it's pathetically, you know, in video games now, you know, it's just, it's nice, easy, you know, more, any moron can do it, you know. Anyway, so back to this. So this is the key event. So, uh, you know, it's the electron does two, th you know, it does two things are going to happen to this electron, right, on the outside of the surface. So you have electrons on the outside of the surfaces, and the idea is <clears throat> electron gets perturbed here, and that perturbs an electron over here, and that's like a transmission of the uh, photon. Obviously, if it gets perturbed in some other direction, then it just becomes heat, and you don't get any consistent photon back out that you can see again. So the idea is, is the electron's going to go, you know, it's tied to a, a proton. So we'll just pretend the proton is, uh, oh, man. This color is really irritating. That lighting is just irritating. Let's see if there's any way to... Okay, that helps. But that's irritating. Anyway, so the electrons, say, in this position, it's going to get moved, okay, on the outside surface. So you have the inside surface, and you have an electron that gets hit on one surface, and then it's going to move this electron. So two things are going to happen. This electron is going to be hit by energy that's pushing it so it pushes in a direction into the world um and when it's doing that it's got now it's got a velocity and it has to somehow lose that velocity for it to stop and get back to where it's supposed to be and so the key thing would be is so it's getting hit with a frequency uh, bits hitting it and then another bit hits it and another bit hits it and another bit hits it and so it's got to rebound to be pushed back out or, you know, eventually because it's tied to the proton. So it's attracted to the proton. So it's one that goes back. But more importantly, it's tied to the electrons. And that pressure is also going to decide whether which way it goes. But anyway, so it has two trips. It makes a trip out from position A to position B. And then it's going to make the return trip once it's stopped. First, it has to be stopped, and then it has to be pushed back to position B. There's no pulling force. There's just a pushing force. And so what's sort of happening here is that when it pushes out, it's got a velocity. And it's only going to go as far as, as it's allowed to go because now there's going to be the external world going to make the exchange. The external world is going to convert it back into a force. So inside the matter, it's just moving electrons with force in between them, of course, but it's moving the electrons. And the last act is to move out. And that movement out means it's going to hit eventually a force in the opposite direction, the field pressure. And so it's going to be able to accomplish some amount of motion before it stopped. And... The, that amount of distance is dictated by how much pressure the external world is producing. But the point would be is that that's, that amount of movement is going to be a reflection of how much pressure the external world is, is producing. But the key thing is, is that <coughs> by changing the point that with this, this interaction would have happened here, and instead it's going to happen here. So an, uh, an event that was going to happen here is now going to happen here because you move the electron. And now when this first event happens, there's going to be a reflection, and that's going to be the force that went in returning, essentially. And then it's going to have to get hit again to move from that position back in. And um, that'll produce another reflection at this location a second time see so that's the thing you, you got to realize is it's this the first motion is stops the forward motion so first you have acceleration in this direction then you have to have zero so zero took a piece of energy to make zero and it takes another piece of energy 
to make go back. So it takes two reflections, and the two reflections are going to happen in the same location. So uh, that, I would argue, is why heat radiates in the infrared range is because that frequency is the most common frequency. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that uh, entirely. So the idea would be is if the electron moves out and then it moves to a location and then it's hit again and moves out even further because it got hit twice because there was two hits here in a fast enough time and so it got two bursts worth. You could see that it would create one return here. And then it would create another return here. But it didn't get stopped here. Well, let's say it did get stopped here. Yeah, so that's true. So it could have got stopped here. But then it gets pushed forward.